Hi, thanks for watching my video today. This video today is for someone I met on Facebook. His name is Atif Riaz, and I met him in the uh, Facebook forums for BMMG, and he is new to BMMG. So, welcome Atif Riaz to BMMG. He was asking me about some, uh, some of the basic functions for the world editor, just the basics. Um, so that's what I want to do today and just, you know, go over some of the most basic, fundamental, most common features for Atif Riaz. So let's get started. Right up here, you have, these are your most basic controls that you're going to use the most. Translate, rotation, and scale. And you can access these by simply clicking one, two, three on your keyboard. Uh, J freezes everything. And if you highlight your vehicle, and this is object select up here. Always make sure you have object select on. And once you select the vehicle, if you press shift and hold your mouse button down and drag, you can copy your vehicles. Or you can copy just about anything in the game. Shift, mouse, hold down, and drag. So number two on your keyboard is rotate. And if you look over here to your rotation and position, you'll see the numbers will change. You have an X, Y, and Z axis. It's just being in a three-dimensional space. You can see position changes. Um, let's see, F11. If you want to position your car back to where a new position, just control R. Those nodes, those little dots you saw pop up, we'll talk about that in a minute. J freezes the game. We'll go back. Uh, let's see what else world position it just changes your cursors your little arrows on the vehicle snap grid this is what you were having problems with when I met you um, you had snap grid on and your vehicle wouldn't leave the foundation uh, snap grid is useful like if you have a bunch of different items like these barriers and you want them to all be equal if you try to do it manually each one is going to be just a little off like that and then this one might be a little low with snap grid every time you snap one down it's just they're all going to be the same you see how even they are so that's basic that's basically snap grid number three on your keyboard is a scale key you cannot uh, rescale your car at least not in the world editor if you want to scale your car or mess with scaled cars you can download go to your vehicles and you can download the e EKT or ETK 800 resizable cars. It's a mod and you can see we'll spawn this one just for the uh, fun of it. We'll spawn new. And there you can get an idea of a oversized car. Pretty cool. <laughs> I made a video using all of those cars. So back to the world editor. J F11. What's next? Um, grid size, snap 45 is a very useful tool if you have something spawned and it's, you want to go absolute 90 degrees, you can do it in increments of 5, 15, 22 and a half and 45, so we'll just do a 45, press number 2, hold the shift key down and then snap it and you'll make a copy of it exactly 45 degrees. So if you want to make sure two objects are absolutely 90 degrees of each other, just use that snap 45. So we'll delete that and then hit Alt Z and put that one back. So that's the snap 45 or the uh, snap tool, rotation tool. Um, toggle terrain, we won't talk about that. The plus sign here, no, 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 no. We won't talk about any of those. Sound emitter, yes, and we can do particle emitter. We'll have to unfreeze the game, and you'll see the sparks, which you might recognize this from um, Car Jump Arena. So we'll go up to our object tool, bring this out a little bit, and <clears throat> if you come over, oh, let me go back on Windows. These are your four main things that you want to work with: Asset Browser, Inspector, Material Editor, and Scene Tree. And we'll talk a little bit about each one of these. Um, 
inspector is over here in my asset browser I like to just have it float out here and the scene tree is here it's everything in the level and player is that car if you I think if you look at it click on this yeah it says player so back over here to the particle emitter if you come over here to emitter and click on this library you can see there's literally I think almost a hundred different emitters that you can put that you can choose from it's like if you make you can make a fire put it on the ground you can use it as a fire a sprinkler steam uh, so let's get rid of it so that's it you click on this and then click on particle emitter. So let's get rid of the particle emitter. You gotta click on object select, highlight it, and then delete it. Go back to J. Let's click on create object. Something else in here. Uh, let's do spotlight. Spotlight. You have two spotlight. You have an ambient light, which is like the sun, and then a spotlight. So we're working on spotlight. Object select light. You can see it's shining that way. So we'll put the snap 45 on. Number two, and then rotate it. One, two. So now it's straight down. Lift it up a little bit. Let's change the color to, let's say, green. You can animate it. Right here is animation. We'll do fire alarm. And then you can change the, the inner angle, the outer angle, and the range. So if you go, if it's only at 10 and you go up, eventually it's going to go in air. So if you wanted to shoot a spotlight, clear across the level just make the range like 50 so let's press F11 go to the environment make it dark out escape alt U turn on our lights <coughs> makes a cool effect kinda looks like a UFO in the sky J to freeze it alt U to bring back your menus escape environment and let's make it day again escape escape F11 and let's highlight make sure we have object select we're on the light and press escape so let's go back here we can close our scene tree we don't need scene tree we really don't here oh yes if you're in the asset browser it gives you a preview in the inspector I thought you could select them out here and do the same thing maybe you can I'm not sure but um, if you're in the asset browser, these are all the items that are located in the game. And then it gives you a three-dimensional preview. So let's shut this down. I swore you could click on that and bring those same buildings up. Oh, there you go. I knew you could do it somehow. So, what else? Um... Let's talk a little bit about the terrain. Let's go out here to the dirt. We'll work right here. These are the, and the little paintbrush size is, you can just select it up here, or you can just use your mouse wheel to roll in and out. You just select, best thing to do here is just start experimenting. That's the best way you're gonna learn. Alt Z, or Control, Control Z to undo. I've been saying Alt Z the whole time, it's Control Z. And uh, it does not look like mud. Is and this. Raise height. Self-explanatory. Again, just mess around with it. You're not going to do anything wrong. If you do all this and you don't hit Control S, you're not saving a level. So once you exit and come back, everything's going to be the same. Even if you do save it, you can still revert it back. If you want to put it back, undo what you did. Hit Control Z or you can just repair. Uh, lower height is the same thing. Just lowers the height. Smooth is just smoothing the edges. Um, smooth slope is a bit complicated. We'll talk about those. See those little shadows hanging? Those are um, decals. Um, smooth slope is kind of weird. It takes like an average between two angles and kind of makes a compromise. I'd hardly ever use it. 
um, paint noise is like if you want to make a mountain range like I say from Lord of the Rings you can just make your brush a bit bigger kind of makes those mountain ranges it's good for making really quick background mountain ranges and then you can of course smooth all of that if you wanted to smooth stuff out a little bit we'll hit control Z and do away with a lot of this stuff um, the flatten tool is self-explanatory just mess with it just flattens everything out I don't use that tool very often I use oh, let's go back to terrain height picker and if you pick terrain height picker you'll see a little red dot you'll see a little red dot on the um, the cursor that picks you'll see right here 78.5 wherever you pick that number will change 79.47 and then whatever you do oh you have to choose average height set height and then it will follow whatever you pick so we'll go to terrain height picker and choose a high spot and watch this number right there change to 88 so now whatever I do will go to 88 these three tools here are used when you're making a um, mesh road editor and um, yeah we can do that very quickly that's your mesh row. We'll do 6.00, 1.00. We'll come here and press Alt to start our road. And you just keep pressing your mouse button if you want to make, make it curve. And we'll go to Object Select. And if you want to fill in a gap between the bottom of the road, align with Mesh Up. And you can see it will align Mesh Up. If you go over the road for example let's raise the mesh above the road you can cut right through that with a lash mesh a line mesh down it will get rid of what's on the road you can hide the road or simply delete the road and it gives you the, kind of the foundation for a road and let me show you something real quick. If you get any weird artifacts or anything like that when you're messing with a level, and you start getting clippings and stuff that's not, come up here and go to Edit and Rebuild Collision. It kind of redoes everything. When you start messing with a level too much and you get clipping or things start going wrong. Um, we can make a quick, I just showed you the road. So let's just, if you make a road and you want to put a texture on it, you do that over here in the, uh, inspector I like to do these track editor H centers these actually glow at night just really cool this is your bottom material and your side material track H F L let's go to environment make it dark out and escape escape control C let's go look at that road See how cool that road looks at night? All of them, those roads like that glow. So let's go back to environment, make it daylight, F11. We'll do a quick river editor. Um, there's several ways to do a river. And we'll just do, a, I'll tell you what, instead of a river, we'll do like a little lake. We'll hollow this out. So we're just going to lower it, make a hole. Actually, is there a material? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, decals right there. I guess we could um, go to Object Select and just delete all the decals for now. I guess would be fine. Okay. Just for the sake of this experiment, I think that that will be fine. Get rid of all this stuff. Okay, now we got something to work with here. Let's get rid of this one. All right, let's make the hole a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper. 
let's smooth everything off a little bit and turn our pressure down. And that's good. We're going to come to our river tool. In this case, it's going to be a pond tool. And we're going to have to make it kind of wide, but we can adjust that later. So we're up here on the river editor. Come over here, just press. We're at 10 and 5, so we'll make this. I know it's going to have to be wide. We'll go with 25. And the depth can be 5. That's okay. So we'll come right about here, press Alt, just drag it over. And you can see, yeah, I think we got it. I think we can work with that. Let's go to our coordination. Yep, I think we can work with that. Let's lower it. Object select, lower it. Let's bring it down. I think we can come over a little bit with it. Let's go down. And there you go. It's hanging out over here a little bit. But we can hide that by raising the terrain over here. J. This is your recording tool right here. If you want to get to that, right here to U UI apps and then click on add and then uh, I think it's at the bottom and just select the record tool so we will with the vehicle selected we're going to press record press J drive the vehicle around shift C to get away from the vehicle we'll drive the vehicle around in a circle real quick and stop right here hit record we don't need to play that back whoops we just left it let's go back to it we'll hit pause back that up F11 object select camera path tool new and we'll start right here Um, add marker and then go forward two seconds. Make sure you have length to current path. <coughs> Move the camera to a new position. Just turn that speed down a little bit. Add marker number two. Go forward two seconds. Go to your new position. Add marker. There you go. And add one. Close and play. go. Um, if you're on your vehicle, I think you should be well aware of your different camera positions. One, camera two, camera three, camera four, camera five. And when you're on camera five, you can move the, the camera around. And you can also do that while it's playing the, uh, the video you just created. If you want a different camera angles, that's camera five. Camera two. Let's back that up and have it play again. Uh, camera four. It's kind of like a the, the, the game will do the own. Ca it's cameras for you. Like I'm not doing anything. I just press four and the game is taking all these camera shots. So I think that's it. So thank you Atif Riaz for your questions. And if you have any more questions, just feel free to ask.